Hey. <laughs> cool. How am I gonna do that? Boo. Boo his. You may want to mute it while people are coming in, Zion. And uh, be sure to send Ryan the invite when uh, when he gets there. Bruce, you can you can cook all you want, man. You earned it. Yeah, I mean uh, that. Uh, Grant, well, Grant, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about a lot of the things. Zion's on mute. He's in a crowded place. Um, so he's got some background noise. I do not, uh, although I'm not in my normal, uh, location, uh, either, obviously. And then we'll see when Ryan gets here. I'm going to text him right now just to see. He says it'll be on in like 10. It's been 20. Ryan, you coming? Question mark. So you may want to check, you may want to keep an eye out on the, uh, on the thing. On the what? Uh, you may want to when he gets in the room or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it'll ding you or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Everybody, get in the uh, comments. Get in there. <laughs> Bruce is doing a victory lap. Uh, if Duke fans want to come and try to uh, counter him or fight with him, please join us on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up. Remember that the thumbs up is for us, not for the performance tonight. So, you know, please, <laughs> please do uh, at least reward us. Uh, and hey, I'm still wearing home field. Promo code crazy, yeah. C-R-A-Z-I-E. Yeah, I don't know where the um, where the YouTube people are at. I don't, I don't know. If, okay, they're starting to sort of creep in. Most of these people are from Twitter. Dang, 500 off the, off the spot. <laughs> That's how you know it's about that. Yeah, people want the victory lap, right? <laughs> Yeah. Not even a victory lap. There's pain. There's pain in these comments right now. Oh, yeah. There's yeah, yeah. pain in these comments. Oh, man. I guess, <laughs> I guess we could get it started. Let's, let's play that. Yeah, intro. Ryan said he's uh, he's coming in two seconds. He's trying to get it to load. Not the scoring. Everything with about 30, 33s or something. Yeah, I mean, we kind of felt that. We kind of feed off that energy. This place is amazing. Like, I, I really love I really love Duke, and I love – the Adams from in here. Mark Williams, beast mode. Paolo, first half, he had the cramping stuff. Fair enough. Beast mode. Oh, man. We up to 700 as a spot. <laughs> yo. Oh, man. Yo. The people are here to, to, for the tears. Um, Welcome back to the crazy <laughs> cast. Uh... Sorry for the loud environment. I am at my brother's crib with a bunch of Duke alums. So, you know, everyone is recovering from this big L. Um, you know, tough one, tough one off the bat. We'll jump into it. But first, we have to uh, do some quick reads. Shout out to our sponsor, uh, Autographed. Um, we're supposed to have the overlay here. Um, yes, Autographed. Shout out to our sponsor, you know. You want sixteen dollar tickets? You know, use the code crazy. Dropping Tuesday, ACC tournament semifinals championship. Go get it. Um, you know, but also uh, shout out to Home Field as well. Use the code crazy if you want. You know, gear. Now that we got that out the way, let's talk, man. Let's talk. We got a lot to talk about, man. Uh, this was a uh, a very disappointing game. Obviously, um, like I kind of said. I feel like, you know, we've been dominated for 80 minutes against UNC, and I don't remember the last time we've been dominated for 80 minutes against UNC, especially, you know, in years that UNC has been better. We're still at least, you know, going to fight in these games. But it was a disappointing performance. Russ, start us off, man. How are you feeling? You know, um, I don't even know that we were dominated for all 40 minutes, but when the first – three minutes you're down 13 because you came in completely asleep uh 
you know, we're, we're plus eight the rest of the game. Like I, we got close a couple times, but like, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to recover 13 points against a team as good as UNC. You're just not like, you can't spot them 13. You know, if you spot a team that is good, that many points, it doesn't matter how you play I, the rest of the game was a lot of back and forth, you know, right. It was a nine point deficit here, six point deficit here. If you erase those first three minutes, <laughs> Then, but like those first three minutes matter. They set the tone for the whole game. They also allowed Cormac Ryan to see a rim that was as wide as the ocean, right? Like you give him two wide open looks. Now everything that he looks at looks like gold. What are you going to do, right? Like you, the team came out terribly. Uh, I, and then we had some really bad performance stuff throughout. Uh, you know, obviously Jeremy Roach, who I've praised all season. Terrible game, <laughs> just a bad game uh, across the board, both ends. He he was really bad. Uh, Tyrese Proctor, I thought was really good in the first half. I thought his defense was really good throughout, but in the second half when we needed a little more offense here and there, um, you know, don't really know where he was. Uh, McCain played well. You got to give it to McCain. He had some he had some turnovers in the first half that weren't ideal, but he was out there, you know, trying. Uh, flip obviously in the second half. Uh, really started to get going in a way that was great, but in the first half, again, that was part of that was part of the problem, right? Um, Flip in the first half couldn't really get anything going, uh, and so by the time he started to play really, really well, we were we were trying to catch up, and even got us to within two, and then we had to bench him because of his foul trouble, and then UNC immediately scores seven again, you know, like so that doesn't help. Uh, nothing from the bench tonight at all. I mean, uh, Ryan was out there fighting at least, which is good, but he missed two like shots that he really should have made. Um, Sean just couldn't get in uh, and stay in because of the foul trouble. He got he got four quick fouls in like seven minutes. The old Josh Hairston special. Uh, so there's there's nothing that he could have contributed. It would have been nice to get him to contribute more because I think he uh, he would have given us a lot of promise. But you know he wasn't he wasn't able to because of the fouls. Fair enough. TJ made a shot, which was great, but he played uh, defense that is commensurate with a freshman. Uh, you know, uh, is not not yet figured it out on that end. Uh, Mark Mitchell was a no show tonight. Just was. I mean, uh, God bless. But like he he just he was running laps out there when he was out there. Uh, that's all he was doing. Um, and then, you know, the biggest concern, obviously, is, uh, Zion, I know you tweeted about it. it. It didn't look like we were trying anything different than the first game. It looked like we were doing the exact same thing that got us beat in the first game. Uh, we just wheeled it right back out. You know, uh, we had Harrison Ingram with smaller guys on him make a couple of baskets. Obviously, Cormac Ryan hit a couple of those threes. Uh, Jared McCain, 6'3". Jeremy's like 6'1", if he's if he's anything. Uh, Cormac Ryan, he's only 6'5", but like he can shoot over you. And especially there was that one where Jeremy didn't even put his hand up. I was, I, I about launched my laptop out the window, man. Uh, like, you know, so if, if we're already having trouble defending the interior, uh, which we did a, a little bit better on that tonight, I thought with the exception of some of the dribble drive stuff, uh, you know, Baycott didn't like go off or anything. They beat us on the glass, but that's, you know, I guess that's par for the course when we play the style of offense we play. But like, if we're going to get beat on the glass, if they're going to score efficiently inside, if we can't score efficiently at the rim because our offense is just let the guards drive into traffic and see what happens. Uh, if we're putting shorter guards in a switch scheme, on wings who can just shoot over the top of them. So they start making threes and they get hot and they get to go off. What's different. Nothing's different than the first game. You know, we turned the ball over less this game. That's true. Um, shot the ball a little better this game. Uh, again, I thought that for 36 minutes, we played fairly evenly, but when you spot them in the first four minutes, 13 points, the other 36 minutes don't matter. They just don't matter. I, I can't even say, well, I'm going to jump it. I'm, I'm gonna let you jump in, Ryan. But I can't even say we played the if we did not play it evenly, man. I can, I, and I know the numbers may say that we played it I hear evenly, you. but like 
when we when you're that when you're down for that long and you're trying to scratch and claw, you should play with more energy. You should play with more effort. We were down yeah. eight, and I saw Elliot Cadeau beating Jared McCain to the ball. On and Jared McCain played a great game, played a great game. But I was so That's indicative well. of of what this these past two games were. We're getting beat to every possession. We're yeah. letting yo yo. The, the crazy thing is, bro. We we said this last game. R.J. Davis. R.J. Davis had nine points tonight. Nine yep. points. The two people I texted y'all about the last before the last two, before the the last game was I'm scared of Cormac Ryan and Harrison Ingram having big games. Both of them won those two. Both of them won them these two games. And we've seen with Carolina in their games that they've lost, it's been R.J. Davis trying to be super Superman and everyone else. Where's everybody else? Yeah, so RJ Davis had nine points. <laughs> Proctor, Proctor did Proctor defensively, I thought did really nice work on RJ Davis, but it doesn't matter if we can't stop the rest of them. And I and I think so what you're saying is fair. The fight was not there, and that's and that goes to coaching in a big way, I think. You know, um, if you and I, there was a clip go uh, Brendan Marks posted that John was like apologizing to the Cameron Crazies, being like you know, I'm sorry, like you deserve better or whatever it is. I mean, yeah, it, it, he should <laughs> like, you know, it's, it was a, a performance that merited apology uh, because they came out so sleepy and for stretches of the game. So sleepy. I, uh, I love this team. I love the guys on the team, uh, but you can't do that. And now Duke fans are like mad that UNC players were talking trash to the crazies. Hey, there's an easy way to remedy that. Win. Win the game. Yeah. It's still not a good look. Crazy's throwing water and throwing stuff on them at the end of the day. There was a few things tonight that did no. not help Duke fans' causes with flip tripping and the crazy's doing that. I don't know if I'm a fan of John Shire's comments either, like apologizing. You don't you don't owe people anything, especially like in my opinion. Like it kind of reminds me of the K going back out on the court and saying unacceptable. Like, not a huge fan of that. Just like Take your loss, go back in the locker room, and, and let's move on from this. And there's no reason as a coach you need to acknowledge the student section in any capacity, in my opinion. I didn't like that. Yeah, I mean, like, but the effort sucked. <laughs> like, the effort was bad. It was bad straight up. Like, I, I, I like, it was bad. And it, yeah, it, it was. And, and going by the back, way, I, I, I want to, I, I want to address real quick don't trip players. That's it. That's it. That's easy. Don't trip people. 100%. That's simple. That's not co a complicated issue. If you're a fan, don't throw water on people. If they're tr talking trash at you, I know you're riled up. You want to throw water. Don't do it. Stupid. Don't do it. Yeah. They get to talk their trash. They beat us. They. Th that's the way it works. That's the way it's always worked since time immemorial. Let, <laughs> let, let them talk yeah. and take yeah. your L and, and move on to the next game. Yeah. yeah. And, and back, I, I, back to the game. Away. I was going to say back to the game, we were talking like Zion, you brought up like the, uh, the second half was played a little bit more evenly. And like you said, Zion, the numbers are going to show that. But like if you watch the game situationally, Duke failed in many ways. Like there was times where you had runs and we couldn't get stops, couldn't get rebounds, uh, coughed up balls, like weren't playing good defense. It was like every time Duke had had a chance to overcome this deficit, they just they botched it in some certain way. And sure, the numbers, we, we made a comeback. It, it was a five point game at the end. Like technically we had somewhat of like a prayer at the end of it but like like you said Zion the number is going to show that the second half was played more evenly even the last probably like 50 minutes of the game or sorry the last uh 30 minutes of the game were played more evenly but it really like as a, as a somebody who watched the game the eye test it wasn't like Duke just couldn't get situational stops when they needed to couldn't get situational buckets when they needed to and it kind of went back to like I feel like this you, you mentioned it Russ about how we didn't learn anything in that first game, right? Like we didn't take anything and do anything differently really in the second game. And it kind of goes back to the struggles we had at the beginning of the season where we seemed like Duke offensively just wasn't running anything besides maybe some pick and rolls like that high ball screen with, with flip and Tyrese Proctor did nothing in the first five minutes. And they kept doing it over and over and over again. And it put flip in a lot of crappy situations. I don't yeah. like that. Flip had a bad game tonight in, in that capacity where I just don't think he was put in the right situations. And granted, He's the only guy who can play the five. He's the only guy that really can defend Baycott, and he got put in that position, and just they they picked on him. And we knew that that was a, a, a scare for us going into the last game, and it happened tonight. Uh, Flip, I, my mentions, I don't know about you guys, have been a disaster with Flip. They're a disaster. Tonight. 
like cussing him out, adding him, telling him he should never come back to Duke. Like some things we've had our issues on the show with Flip and his effort and some uh, some softness in the past, sure. But man, where would this team have been in the, in the second half without Flip tonight? I mean, he scored twenty three points total. Majority of them coming, or a lot of them coming in the second half, like. Flip played a game. You could go and nitpick it. But as far as his usage goes, Flip was getting the ball every time down the floor. He was being picked on on defense the entire night. Like, I've been a – I've called out Flip many times this season. But tonight, I have to – like, I don't know if I just watched him differently tonight. But I, I was – it was like, dang, this guy is literally involved in every single play and doing basically the best he damn well could. And if it wasn't for Flip tonight, we would have gotten beat by 25, 30 points, especially with the way Roach played. Ryan, Ryan, yeah. Baycott, Baycott tonight got nine points on four of 11 shooting. Right, like, but uh, what I'm saying is they were able to pick on him and and no, I know that he was off on, yeah, no, they, they, and they were doing that at times. But I I think that the people's focus on flip, like, if they want to focus on the trip, which was bad and he shouldn't have yeah. done it, sure, yeah. yes, great, do that. But yeah. in terms of like the play and how many people are like, oh, he sucks, he's awful, like he's what. Uh, I think that's kind of insane considering that there were <laughs> multiple returning players that played objectively so much worse than he did tonight. Uh, and like, also, to your point, putting players into spots. Zion, you've talked about several times running plays uh, for like Jared McCain pinned down threes, which I, I think we did like maybe once or twice today, you know, like I, from what I could tell. Maybe we were trying to do it and they were disrupting it. I don't know. Um, but you – you couldn't see it. You couldn't see it on the court running the play McCain catch and shoot stuff. So we were not getting good looks. Like we just were not getting clean looks. We weren't sharing the ball. I can't see what the um, assist stats are for today, but I mean, I've got to assume that our assist to field goals made ratio has got to be like 33% or something like this. Right. What is, sorry, I'm leaning in like an old man, like try to yeah. figure it out. So 10 and then how many field goals did we make up at the top? 26 oh my god 26 right so like 40 uh, sub 40 percent right like that's bad <laughs> you know that's what i think i think it was i don't know if it's connor o'neill or brendan marks it's one of them who has tweeted out that when duke has 50 percent or better assist rate duke always wins and when we have less than that uh our <laughs> it's it's something like we lose like 40 percent of the time 50 percent of the time you know like if, if you disrupt our ability to move the ball then Duke settles into this and then it doesn't work very well. And by the way, we're putting a lot of focus on the offense for a night where we did score 79 points. The defense is also the thing that troubles me even more going into March, right? Our inability to guard guys who are six, five, six, 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 seven, who can just shoot over the tops of, you know, the guards who end up getting switched on to them. That is like, like problem one, two, and three for me. Are, are like that, that, and then uh, the ability of opposing guards with speed to just blow by ours, which we yeah. also saw tonight multiple times. I, I will say, back to Flip, um, a dominant second half. That was a dominant second half. I mean, that's what yeah. we needed. That's why I tweeted at halftime. I said, we, we need an All-American Flip in the second half. We got him. My, I, I think the biggest issue with Flip is how we start. I yeah. think, you know, he's a big... We need Flip to jumpstart us, you know, at, at the moments. Like, because, like, it goes back to the, the, the mid-season grades episode. And I'm, I'm not always – I'm not doing this, like, as a joke. We always bring it up because my biggest problem with Flip was he's on the bench either with two fouls or, you know, it's the poor shots or it's the 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 inability to jumpstart an offense that, that – was the issue all the time. And that that's kind of what we saw today. I mean, what was it? A 19-6 start? 19-6 start was was yeah, we were down 13. Yeah. As much as we want to recover from that against this Carolina team, you will not recover from that. And you know, it didn't help that Jeremy played his absolute worst game of the season. Maybe one of the worst games of his definitely one of the worst games of his career. Um but you know, even from his standpoint, he's been consistent all year all year up until this point he's been consistent all year so i'm not gonna say he's due for one but you know we got to give him at least grace to, to that standpoint because you know he has been pretty much great the whole season um but yeah that's my only issue with flip and i think you know um 
going into to March uh, Madness and the ACC tournament, if Duke wants to make a run, we need number 30, man. We need yeah. number 30 for, for maybe not 40 minutes, but 30, 30 at least. Yeah. Yeah, so I have, a, I have a comment and then a question, and kind of goes back to what Russ you were talking about before before Zion was speaking. We, the, the, my biggest issue with that whole thing was was in the first half, at least the first ten minutes. Is actually the whole game offensively, we were not getting many open looks, especially in that first half. Like that was egregious. Uh, I kind of piggyback on what you said, and UNC was getting anything they wanted whenever they wanted, which was just super frustrating. My question to you off of that is, uh, for some hope going forward. UNC just seems like, and I get it, you can possibly replicate this with other teams, but it seems like UNC just maybe is a bad matchup for us this season. Like, it is what it is. Older team, they run the floor better, they have better spacing than we do. Like, I'm not saying that other teams in the NCAA tournament can't replicate this and matchup-wise we couldn't run into a team like this, but that being said, is this just a bad matchup for us or did we just get really, not lucky, but um, get away with a bad ACC and we picked on them for most of the – most of the season and UNC was our buzzsaw and is a exponentially better team than we are even outside of the matchup. I, I wouldn't say exponentially. I mean, I think the, the numbers don't lie. I, I mean, they, they beat us soundly twice. I mean, like I, I, there's no getting around that they have been better. They have certainly performed better in the games against us. Uh, I think they have been better on the season generally as a whole. I, I'm hesitant to say like just go ah oh, it's like just a, it's just a bad matchup because we didn't try anything new like how do we know if it's a bad matchup unless we yeah. try some new interesting things right like throw some different looks like when we started pressing a little bit at the very end I was like okay well maybe that's that's interesting you could try some things certainly R J Davis has been susceptible to turning the ball over under pressure. Uh, at times this season. So why didn't we do that, say, way earlier? <laughs> or, you know, like, I, that's the thing that really kills me, and I tweeted about this. We have seen multiple games this year where Duke has lost, where in the last, like, two to three minutes, we play with great urgency, and then we get the game to make it look like a respectable final score. But why do, why does it take being down like 10 points with like six minutes left or whatever for Duke to finally go like, oh, like we better try something. This is interesting. Like we better go. Like we, we need that earlier. We need it earlier. I like that's the thing that kills me. That's the thing that kills me. I think it's so obvious that if we play with that level of urgency for a larger stretch of time, that Duke will, and Jay even talked about it on the broadcast where he said something along the lines of like, Duke looks like they're playing at like three quarters speed, right? They're, they just look, they look sleepy out there, you know? Uh, and that is inexcusable in a rivalry game. Let's be clear. I'm not saying yeah. that is like to try to like brush off like, oh, we're better than UNC or blah, blah, blah. I'm not trying to say that at all. I'm saying that there is a real problem when the motivation in terms of how it manifests itself externally is not present on the court in a rivalry game twice. That's a problem. That's yeah. all I'm saying. And so that's why I said earlier that I don't mind John being like, I'm sorry, because maybe from a, if you want to like PR it and try to figure out, you know, like whatever that's, I, I, I can't even think about the spin of like what a statement like that would be. It's more that as somebody who watched the game, and as somebody who's rooted for Duke all his life and who went to Duke and whatever else, and you see the lack of effort and energy in a, in a UNC game, I get why he would think, yeah, they're owed an apology. <laughs> I, I do kind of understand that. Yeah. Zion, before I'll let you jump in about my bad matchup question, but yeah, for me, like, I don't know. As somebody who's like a fan and having the four signees that we had there tonight, like just seeing this effort too is so – disappointing and i'm not i'm definitely not being like oh you guys are gonna decommit but it's just like it's just disappointing on so many levels and that's like another one where it's like you have these guys who are coming here next year watch you do that and it's like no it's just discouraging man i i don't k is just there another, there's another aspect there. all the yeah. uh, all the old players are there like we, we might just want to get to a point where we we don't allow any of those <laughs> Like, I don't know what it is. I, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> where I don't know what it is about Kay and a bunch of the old players, like, showing up that makes, like, you know, the buttholes get tight on the Duke squad. I don't I don't get it. But, like, 
it, it seems that way, man. It's it's a bad look. Like it's not a good look. But I don't I don't think it's going to matter for co- incoming recruits because they correctly and confident they have the confidence to be like, it's not going to be me, right? That's not going to be me, right? Yeah. Like no high school player is like, oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna come out with bad effort in a <laughs> in a rivalry game. Like no no guy is watching even if they watch like a bad effort rivalry game. They're not going to go like, well, I'm going to react that way, you know. Touche. Yeah. Touché. Yeah. Uh, and back to the matchup thing. Um, I think it is a bad matchup, but I do think UNC is a better team. <laughs> like, uh, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. They're a better team. <laughs> they have a they have an established yeah. identity. You know, they have an established leader, yeah. and they have established role players. So, you know, even a sense, even in in a night like this where R.J. Davis is held to nine points, or Bain, Armando Baycott is held. When he had nine points too, um, yeah. For both of them had nine points. Their role players stepped up. Their role players were talking. Harrison Ingram had, although you know Cormac Ryan is twenty five, yes, but he was ready for the night. Harrison Ingram was ready for the night. So, you know, I think it's just them being a more cohesive team. They've been playing like this since the beginning of the season. I mean, yeah, we've watched Carolina. The games they've lost. They lost to a very good UConn team where, you know, it was a battle. You know, they had a couple of ACC blunders, but they've been a better team all year. So I can't say they aren't the better team right now. And you, you just kind of hope that you see them. Like, and I don't know if we hope we see them again. ACC. Do you, though? Do you, though? I, 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 truthfully, I truthfully the, the Duke fan in me will say, yo, let's run it back. But the re- the realist in me will say no. I don't want any part of a third game because I don't even want the thought of them possibly beating us three times in the season. Um, I just don't but- want to see that. I, I don't even. I don't even care if we. I mean, I care if we lose again. But if we lost in a game where we were fighting and like the effort was there for forty minutes and we just lost straight up in a game where it clearly like mattered in the way it manifested itself on the court. Like, that'd be one thing. Like, it, it does burn me that twice now, I just kind of felt like we saw the team at the beginning of the game kind of go, or like there's some stretch of game where the team, like a loose ball happens and there's three UNC players who get to the ball before the first Duke player does. Like, that's that sort of thing is antithetical. Like, imagine telling a Duke fan 20 years ago that that would happen in a UNC game. You know what I mean? That's... It's just yeah, ridiculous. That's like, that's, it's frustrating because like this doesn't even doesn't this doesn't even go down as like an all time Duke game. Like it, it, when it comes to these games, it's like you're looking at like effort and like relentlessness and everything. And like to play a third game, exactly what you said, Russ is, is like if it's a classic Duke Carolina hard fought super close game till the end and we lose, great. Like it was a fun game. It, it was both teams gave it their all. But like these games just suck to watch as a Duke fan because it's just like that wasn't yeah. there at all. And like you could, we can't even say. I don't even think UNC fans can say like these are just classic Carolina Duke games. No, they're not. Duke did not give full effort the entire four minutes of both games, and for most of the game, didn't give that effort that we were looking for. So it's like these games. That's what sucks about these is like they don't go down in the books of like really good Duke UNC traditional games. It's just like we just sucked and uh, didn't give any effort and just. It's kind of disrespectful to the rivalry, in my opinion, but that's a little yeah. Deep, so. I'm I'm reluctant to lean on it too hard because w- when we lean on it too hard, then it makes it seem like oh, if Duke gave effort, then Duke would win, and like I don't no. know that that's yeah. necessarily true. It's more just like as a Duke fan who has now watched two games of where there were long stretches. I'm not going to say the whole game, but key stretches of subpar effort in a rivalry game that sucks and is and is hard to watch and you know we can we can also say very easily <laughs> like if, if you wanted to wave your hand you could be like if the Elliot Cadeau shot doesn't go in then it's a two-point game or whatever it is right but don't that's what that. happens that. 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 well, hold on wait let me finish my point that's what happens when you get down 13 like those shots go in sometimes like you can't allow yourself to be in a situation where if somebody does throw up a shot with time going expiring, that then that becomes like a nail in the coffin. You can't let it even get there because sometimes that shot does go in. So you, what I'm saying is you cannot wave your hand at that moment because all of the bad play that led to us being behind when that shot went in. And of course, all of us, I think Zion and you and I tweeted the exact same thing at the same time. We're like, that kind of night, I guess. But like, but also, if we weren't down 13 in the first four minutes, then that shot doesn't matter as much, you know? Like, 
Yeah, yeah, I don't know. 100%. I will say, I, I, I wanted to address some, some comment. I for, it's, too, it's too many comments, so I can't catch up to it at this point. But they did say, they asked if Duke wanted to be a two seed or a three seed. We we can want to be a two seed. We're not going to be a two seed at this point. So you can kind of put that uh, in. If, in. If, we went out, yeah. if we win out, if we win the ACC tournament, I think there's a chance if if, if the dominoes no. fall in our favor, the no. cars fall I don't in our think favor. Like, no, I don't, I don't think the ACC championship ever matters. Like, I think we have enough That's proof at this point that they, they already have the seed lines locked in by Saturday unless there's a, unless there's an auto bid at play. I, I will say that the other teams that are trying to get a two seed also have, like, some real shakiness going on. You know, your Iowa – like, Iowa State lost today in, in sort of embarrassing fashion, and um, I think Marquette won. But, like, I don't know that there were many – I don't know that the fourth. Uh, I don't know that the fourth uh, team on the two line is like completely set in stone. So I think like if if those teams lose early and we don't lose early, it, I don't think it's impossible. I, I think it's far more likely that we get a three seed than a two seed. But I won't. I won't act like the two seed is impossible. And if that's the case, then I would love the two seed because Arizona is likely to be a two seed. I would think. And if Arizona is a two seed, then they're going to be the two seed in the West. So we're yeah. going to get a two seed, not in the West, and that and that matters significantly, I think. So uh, regardless, yeah. just kind of always want to say, I, I mean, people are like, oh, if I get the three seed in the East and the two seed in the West, in my opinion, you always want the higher seed. Like statistically speaking, you have better odds. Uh, two seeds have better odds across the board of making it to the Final Four than a three seed. So, like, I I'm one that that believes in that, uh, believes in the numbers there. But yeah, I'm taking a two seed, the last two seed over the number one three seed, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I, I, just, I, I just think we're generally right. Maybe yeah. I, I would, I would, I just think we're locked in at a three, and I think we just hope Most right likely. now. I just I think we hope right now we get to at least first round. Or I guess this is the bias in me. I hope we go to Brooklyn, you know, come come to New York, get that as a first round, you know, heavy Duke crowd there. Um, and hopefully get to the second week. Second so week. Like, I'm I, not on my. I don't have a computer right now. Uh, what is the ACC bracket set now? Or is there any more games left tomorrow? Or is that, it? Are we set? I mean, we'll be the we're, two. We're at the, yeah, we're going to be the two regardless. No, I know, so but like, who who, who who do we play the winner of? Uh, depends on the games going on now. Um, oh, okay, I see. didn't know if there's any more left. I forget. I'm yeah, because we actually won the earlier earlier ACC game, games today. I think Virginia plays it. Well, it is oh week. God, my um, mentions are so funny, dude. My mentions are so funny. <laughs> what are your mentions? What are your mentions? Share with the class. I, my, my, my man, the Duke agenda, <laughs> referring to him as Jeremy Leroy Jenkins Roach, <laughs> because he kept just man, running I, into traffic. <laughs> I, I'm I'm all for like this is where it's tough because like with Roach, like I, part of me feels bad. Like it was hit. Like it yeah. was him that did it. And everything like he had the bad performance, but like I do feel bad. And there's like people want to say there's a chance he comes back next year, but like no. if this was it for Roach, this is a tough, tough way to go out for someone who has done so much with this program. And I've obviously had my issues in the past with certain levels of play at certain times, but like get my apologies. We, we're, we're past that now. I, it just that sucks to see him shoot as poorly as he did. There were some decisions that were made in the game, like you talked about Russ with the not getting his hand up. Um, on that Cormac three pointer, just like something that you wouldn't expect to see out of a, out of a Jeremy Roach in a big game senior night, um, it just sucked. I feel I, I do feel for him a little bit. Like obviously it's self inflicted, but that sucks to see. You don't want to see a guy who's been at the program four years through a lot. Like probably like if you think about it, these last four years when it comes to with the Coach K transition in Shire, unlike any other player that's been in this program, just wanted him to go out on a high note, at least play well. Um, I, I feel for the man. He played 39 minutes, shot the ball terribly. Just sucks. I feel for the kid, man. That's tough. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, kind of piggybacking off of that, I definitely saw a lot of Jeremy Roach hate tonight. And like I said, like I'm, I don't mean to make excuses for him, but it's a man who hasn't been healthy most of the season. Um, it's also a man, you know, who's been consistent, been arguably yeah. our best player the whole year. So, you know, I'm not yeah. going point fingers. Oh, Jeremy Rose, yo, yo, this is on you. This is on you. He'll tell you himself. This is probably on him. So, you know, yeah, he's been our leader all year. He's been the reason why we in, in this position today. So I'm not going to, you know, go on a Jeremy Roach uh, hate parade. 
I want to give give me give, give me hold on, Russ. Give me give me ten seconds because he played four minutes, but. TJ Power, just a little bit of flowers. Like, thank you for coming in and giving some effort, knocking down a couple shots. Like, thank you. Needed that at the end there. It gave us some hope. Thank you for the hope. But other than that, I mean, he only played four minutes, so we can't talk too much about him. But thank you. Uh, that was great. Was, what, my my, that's my a, question that's to that. Pull, that's a sad pull clip. That's a sad <laughs> pull clip. Play, play, play the violin in the background. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Wait, sad, my question. Sad, uh, yeah. <laughs> my question to that though is, would y'all give more more minutes to TJ Power in the ACC tournament now? Hell yeah. I mean, I, I mean more. Okay, sorry. He's in the last like two weeks or the last since Caleb Foster's been down. He's what averaging like eight. Well, tonight probably eight to nine minutes a game, right? Maybe. I, look, I, his defense is is not good it's not good we don't have to pretend it's good and he's a freshman and that's okay right like uh, again if he's giving like some joey baker type defense it's he's a freshman and and that's not to be unexpected but i do think that in certain matchups uh teams are going to target him like teams will target him and so i i I think it would be nice to have him out there, especially if he's making shots, but he is sort of a dude where if, if like the first couple of shot or two don't fall, I don't know that he gets the amount of leash to like see, because I think any smartly coached team, and there aren't many of those in the ACC granted, but uh, any smartly coached team is going to target him in ISO and just, and let him cook. So I don't know. I, that's, I mean, that's a long way to say, I don't know. But we weren't getting much stops anyway, regardless. But you know, there, there is that flip side. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I, I think, I think it's, I think if it's somebody shooting over Jeremy and Jared, or like, you know, if somebody's blowing past Jeremy Roach, then at least you're like, but it's Jeremy Roach, and he has shot. You know, he's done consistent things for us over the years, and so like, even though it's really frustrating in a game like this, you go. All right, I, you have to take the good with the bad to some extent. But when it's with somebody who's a freshman, I don't know that they get that same degree of leeway necessarily. Uh, like I, I'd like to see more. I'd love to see him also come back next year. Again, he's a he's a, clearly a very good shooter uh, and he's got good size. I think he's got a lot of good potential. I just don't know necessarily about this year. That said, if Caleb Foster can't play, then like, what choice do we have? We got to play somebody. Right, right, right. Yeah. Do y'all want to uh, play the, the Shire opening statement? I kind of, I kind of did want to hear the Shire statements. Yeah. Can you make sure okay. to turn it up nice and loud so we can hear it on the uh, the audio form of this? You. By the way, anyone watching on YouTube, hit the thumbs up. Do y'all see this? Yeah, we got. Yeah. This. Okay. Let me know on sound. I'm about to play it now. Very I'd love serious. to look at the stat sheet and just puts it down. <laughs> okay, well, uh, um, congrats to North Carolina. You know, it was a uh, disappointing loss for us. You know, it's uh, if you want Turn to a little bit like you, you left it. If you uh, control the things that you could control, and I don't think we quite did that. But you have to give them credit the way they came out. Uh, that's really the story of the whole game for me. You know, they came out and got a 15-point lead. We outscore them the rest of the game. You know, you cut it to one in the start of the second half. And I thought just for us, we didn't take, we took some tough shots. And the tough shots led to their runouts in transition. Um, you know, Ryan sees the two threes, he's wide open. And it all started from bad possessions on offense, not being strong with the ball or taking some weak shots. And uh, it's disappointing. You know, I, I just want to thank our students, you know, our, our fans, our everybody. I mean, this, this environment, I don't care where you go, it's the best environment in college basketball. And there's a part of you that feels like you let them down. And as a team, you know, senior night, and I think we probably got in, got caught up in some of that stuff. And, um, you know, all well intentioned, but uh, we didn't play like we've been playing. The, the connectivity on offense, and uh, you gotta get some of those loose balls still. Like I said, it's one one possession game. Saw the second half. Uh, you cut it to three late. You're still right there, uh, but just too many plays throughout. So 
I told the team, you guys can ask me anything. You know, I told the team afterwards, it'd be one thing if we lost and we weren't good enough or it's something you can't control. I feel everything here is what we can control. I really do. Like this group can do it. It's just, we have to, we have to learn from this. You have to learn and understand um, those possessions. It's not just a bad shot, it's a bad shot now. You're down three, they have momentum. You know, I could go down through the game and um, this group is, Always responded. I think it's going to be nothing different now, uh, but it hurts. It's disappointing, and uh, we have to get refreshed and regrouped and uh, go in ACC tournament fresh and understand what we have to do to get better. Yeah, I, I'll, yeah, I'll say like he's right, right? Like this team responds well to this. Maybe I hate being the guy that's like, oh, maybe this is what this team needed. Like they were playing really well and everything was clicking, like going to NC State and winning the way they did. And obviously NC State's not a good team by any stretch of imagination, but like right. this team was probably getting a little, maybe a little cocky. I'm, I don't know. That's just a speculation for him saying that. Like we can learn from this, move on. And like, you're not in, you're not uh, unbeatable right now, even though you're playing really well, like you still have to go out and perform high energy, um, yeah, I, he didn't say anything. Hold up, hold, hold up, hold up. My, my, my thing is, why didn't you learn from the last game? Why wasn't that a punch? <laughs> why wasn't that a punch in the mouth enough? Why does this have to be our oh, learning moment? Like, how are we that, having I mean, a that, learning that moment? That game was what, a month and a half ago. I'm like, I, they moved on from that and won a lot of games after that. Like, against bad teams, dude. All right, this is what kills me. All right, hold go on, on, go on, go on. All right, go on, bro. No, I let me cook. Let me cook for a second because this is we have played four games, four all season, four against teams that are not bubble teams in the NCAA tournament. Okay, four Arizona, twice UNC, at home Clemson. Okay, uh, Baylor. Okay, that's five. That's five. You give me the full screen. God damn, man. <laughs> calm, calm down. It's been I've been drinking a lot. My face is puffy. You know, leave me alone. You go, bro. Cook. We. <laughs> We've played five games, okay, against teams that are not bubble teams. We are one and four in the spread against those teams. We are two and three heads up against those teams. And we are in a position where we are going to play a non-bubble team in the second round of the NCAA tournament, like realistically. That's just facts. And certainly in the third round, we are going to play a team uh, in the Sweet 16. We're going to play a team that's not uh, a bubble team. So what, it, the Arizona game was a learning experience, right? It was a learning experience. And then Clemson, we, we pulled it out. We barely pulled it out at home against Clemson. Barely pull it out, right? But, you know, there's mitigating factors. We're learning. And the first loss against UNC, it's a learning experience. And this game is a learning experience. At what point do we stop learning? <laughs> or like I know we never stop learning. I know Facts. we keep. I know we keep learning. I know that like naturally, every single human being continues to learn. Every group continues to learn. That's part and parcel of just being a human being. But in terms of delivering, right, delivering upon expectation in games that matter against teams that are better than us, or not better than us, not even better than us, against teams that are above the bubble, right. We are two and three heads up, one and four against the spread. Okay. So then, how can you go into March with great confidence and say, well, well, we won uh, eight of the last 10 or whatever, right? Whatever it is now at this point. Yeah. But when all eight of those teams, when six of them aren't making the tournament and two of them are going to sneak in by like the skin of their teeth, then when we go up against a six seed in the second round, how are you feeling great? You know what I mean? Like, uh, look, do I think that Duke should beat a six seed? Of course, definitely, definitely. But have we proven it over the course of a season? I, no, I don't think that we have. And do I think that we need to be having learning experiences at this point to be like, well, we need to we need to keep learning how to like beat. Man, we brought back four or five starters. I know that we're young. I know we're young. We brought back four or five starters, man, and and. Our oldest player, that's the other thing. I see everybody on Twitter being like, well, Cormac Ryan's 24, uh, 25. Armando Baycott's 23, 24. Dude, Jeremy's 23 or 22. Laid an egg tonight. I'm not saying that like that's that means you throw him under the bus, but age isn't the only factor here, clearly, right? Age is not the only factor. 
So if we were going to play in the NCAA tournament, NC State and Virginia Tech and Pittsburgh, I think we'd be golden. <laughs> but that's not reality, okay? <laughs> but we're going to play teams that are much better than that. So we got to play better than that. Like, we shouldn't be learning experience right now, man. Like, God damn, dude. It's not It's not yeah, rocket yeah. science. You've got to beat these teams. We beat Baylor. We beat Baylor, dude. I was stoked. I did not think we were winning that game, and we beat Baylor shorthanded. We beat Baylor, and I was like, "Man, all right, this team's got some got some uh, irons in the fire, right?" We beat Michigan State, who they're a little bubbly now, right? But at the time, I was like, "Okay, Michigan State, we beat Michigan State. That's a good win, right?" What are we doing now, though? We're beating bad teams, mediocre teams. We're losing to the good teams. We're losing in hard situations at Wake, right? We're losing those games. Man. So then what What am I as a Duke fan? How am I supposed to feel when we're going to go up against a six seed from the SEC or the Big East or whatever, <laughs> right? And they're going to come out and they're going to get it like a, a a 12 to 2 lead in the first three minutes. And then we're going to hear a press conference being like, there's a learning experience for next year. <laughs> Man, all my, like, I backstory, I, when it comes to Duke in January, I'm always like, at the the season's over, like we're done. And then in March, I just have like, the most optimism of any Duke fan possible. And I had that still right now. Like they're going to figure it out now. Like this is, this team has played well a lot and Rush just literally cooked and shit on all of my like optimism that I had. Like, dude, they beat, they were on the table and they see the tournament. They go into March madness with motivation and fire and energy. And that's me as like the optimist in March for whatever reason it is. And uh, you make the points that make sense, right? Like, we have beaten up on bad teams. We've covered the spread a lot against bad teams. We go up against decent teams like UNC. And at the time, Wake was on the bubble. Then they weren't. And now they're back in the bubble. But, like, you lose against them. And it's like, sure, you can talk about injuries. Foster being out. Roach having some lingering stuff. You have Proctor being out. Like, there's that involved as well. But, like, you're right. The ACC isn't that good. And we don't haven't really been beaten. The, the, and Virginia, like, if Virginia is your – like level set of this conference being good and a good team that you're beating. Like, I'm sorry that like for this season, at least that's like a joke. That's just not good enough to, to make you say, yeah, this is the team that's going to take us to the final four in March. And so I still have optimism, but yeah, you're right. Like what, when does learning become execution? Right. And like, when do you take that UNC game in February and learn from it and come back tonight and execute on a different game plan? And that just hasn't happened yet. And, you're right. Like, what did we learn from Tennessee last season? Mark Mitchell being out five minutes before the game. Sure, that sucked. But, like, going into this tournament, is that – are we learning from anything that happened in that game, like, matchup-wise? Like, you know, like, when do we – like you said, when do we stop as a team slash program, stop learning and start executing and winning? I, I think more than anything, I, I still believe that this team can go on a run. Let's be clear. Like, mm-hmm. right, we've got the talent. The talent is there. You can't teach talent. OK, so I do believe that we have the talent. We can put it together. We've seen teams put together deep runs under these circumstances. We've seen that. Right. But you feel better if you have proof in the resume. If the proof is in the pudding, then you feel a lot better. I shouldn't be going into March on blind optimism. I should be going in on optimism that is based on results. You know, and we just don't have we just don't have those results consistently this year outside of that Baylor game. Other than uh, other than unless you're somebody who is on my Twitter feed going, uh, oh, well, the ACC is bigger than the big better than the Big 12 because we went nine and three heads up because the Big 12 played against the ACC. uh, You know, like they played against Notre Dame and Louisville, you know, a couple times or whatever. I you know, like there's I I. I think the narrative around the ACC, this is why it needs to be addressed generally because these teams aren't good enough and they need to be better because when Duke generally has done their best, it's when there's a good ACC, when we're challenged throughout the entire season. So that then that way, when we play an SEC team, a Big Ten team, a Big East team, a Big 12 team, uh, anywhere, right? Then we have a lot of seasoning up to that point. We've played harder teams than them. We've played physical teams, well-coached teams. There aren't those teams in the ACC right now. They're just not. So all we've got right now to go on is, well, these guys are really talented, and we saw them beat Baylor in December. (laughs) 
<laughs> and like, and we saw them beat some bubble teams uh, in February. And we have to hope that that translates to a deep run. Like, I, I, and I still, I believe deep down because I can't help it. I'm a fan. I believe that we do. I believe that we can. I can't help it. But yeah. I don't like being the blind optimist. I like being the optimist that is based on on facts and results and numbers. We just don't have that right now. Yeah, uh, you did go extreme from my, my point. I did. I did think you were cooking though, uh, but you went a little extreme. I won't fairly say like you know. I won't discredit our team fully what they've done the past couple of weeks because you know they have a, a they do have eight ACC wins over. I think the deficit is fifteen plus. 15 plus, um, what a 15 we're, plus margin. We are good at beating bubble or worse teams. We are very good at beating those but, type of but teams. You're supposed to beat those teams. You're supposed you are. to. I agree. Have. I and agree. We have. So, you know, agree. if we are, if we are in a bad ACC, we're supposed to win those games that we have. You know, the two losses to Carolina, we've looked like a, a, a team that, you know, we maybe have to lower expectations for, but I still think, number one, the tournament is based off of matchups. So, it's dependent yeah. on whoever we get. We may not see a team, you know, as uh, as physical uh, as UNC or, you know, as, you know, uh, experienced as UNC. Um, but I think you just have to – you have to kind of put the full scope of things. You know, we still have a team that, by the numbers, is one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. When we're healthy, we – hopefully Kayla Foster, that's the question mark. If we get him back. We have a guard rotation that is still one of the best in the country. Um, so there are things you can back at least to say, okay, can we win three, four straight to get to the final four? I think we still can. It's all about matchups. Um, but you definitely have reason for concern. My biggest thing was Shire's statement. Like that, I don't get, like you said, like you covered pretty much the whole time. Oh, Ryan said his phone was about to die or did die. Um, <laughs> I don't just don't get the experience uh, or this is a learning experience. That is the worst thing you could say after getting swept by UNC. I think the only yeah. the visible change I saw tonight was, okay, we doubled the post less, but we were still, <laughs> we were still face guarding, you know, RJ all night. We were still getting manhandled by Harrison Ingram. Those things we did not adjust to. And yeah. that is where a learning experience, that is just hypocritical at that point. Because last game was supposed to be a hurt learning experience. Like you said, Arizona, that was supposed to be a learning experience. Shoot, Georgia Tech, that was supposed learning to be a learning experience. experience. <laughs> you guys we are the last. This learning experience stuff. <laughs> it's the last game of the season. Hey, hey, Zion, Zion, put up, put up NDV's comment of Russ acting like we aren't five and four in in Q one. Well, you know, I don't you, see that. Uh, it, it's it's back a couple. Uh, anyway, we had a comment that said uh, we're acting like we're not five and four in Q one. All right, let's break down who those five and four wins are against, though. Right, Michigan State neutral. They're like a nine seed, ten seed. They're right around there. Okay. The, and that's in a tournament setting, okay? A neutral court, great. Neutral court against Baylor. Like I said, that's the best win of the season by a mile, by a country mile. Great win. There's there's no getting around that one. Phenomenal win. At home versus Clemson by one in a game where we were like six, seven point favorites. Okay, we won. You win the game. That's all that matters. Just win, baby, right? That's all that matters. At Virginia Tech, now I realize that we've lost a lot at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech's not a good basketball team, right? They're not a good basketball team. That does not mean that winning there is not important to the season. It is. But they're not a good basketball team, right? And then we win uh, versus uh, what's the fifth Q1 win that we had? I'm just like scrolling through to try to figure out what it was. Oh, at uh, Pittsburgh, you know, and that was a really good win. We, we smushed them. But also, uh, Pittsburgh is barely a, like they're probably not a tournament team. Maybe they're a tournament team, but like they're the epitome of like we're just going to beat up bad teams and maybe we can sneak in in the first four, right? Like God bless Capel. I think Capel should be a real contender for ACC Coach of the Year for finishing like fourth in the ACC. I think that's wild considering I thought that they were going to finish like bottom three of the ACC. So like that, God bless Capel. But, like, when those are our five Q1 wins, 
what are you impressed by there other than like our ability to win on the road? We're not playing the tournament on the road. We're playing neutral court and we wouldn't play any of those teams other than Michigan state. Maybe, but they're on, they're going to be on the top side of the bracket anyway, as a nine seed. Maybe we'd play them opening round. <laughs> like, you know, if we're a, if we're a two or a second, second uh, round, right. If we're a two seed, which I don't think will happen. And they're a 10 seed, something like that. Right. Maybe we'll play better since the rest of the season. will be on a neutral floor. Maybe, maybe, but, but what teams have we beaten in a neutral or away situation that we would face in the tournament, that are tournament caliber, right? Again, I'm not saying Duke can't beat those teams. They can. They've shown that they can. But the resume of, uh, uh, like, against those top-tier teams, if we're talking about can we run to a Final Four, if we're talking about can we go to an Elite Eight, we need to be able to beat, like, a, like two-seed caliber teams, right? How many two-seed caliber teams have we played this year? One. We've played we've played two. We played Arizona and UNC and we're 0 3 against them. I, I will say I will say we did not have these uh, if you're referring to the 2022 team as in the Palo team, they had wins over Gonzaga and Kentucky earlier in Correct. the season. So this is not the same completely different situation. Yeah, <laughs> we also we also had a top, what matters, top, top right? Three. <laughs> you could prove it going into that tournament, even if you were concerned, you could prove going into that tournament. That like, oh, well, we can beat the teams that are the high seeds. We can do it. I don't know. Yeah. I, like, again, the, the Duke fan of me who loves these players, who loves, uh, you know, Shire and really wants uh, to see the great results, I'm still holding out faith, but it's based on faith. It's not based on the resume other than that Baylor win. It's just not. Yeah, and I'm not like, I don't want to get to it because, you know, you know they're going to come for us on Twitter. They're gonna cut. Yo, there's, there are four thousand people watching this on Twitter. They're so right now. negative. Four, They're so four thousand people are watching on Twitter right now. Shout out to all of y'all. They're gonna say we're too negative. I, I'm not. I'm not like we said, and I, Russ said it too. We're very much in belief that this team can make a run. Um, yes. So yeah. you know, and I think the the team has enough talent to make a run, like Russ said. But there's a lot of room for for concern especially with these two performances against USC late in the year and, and our coach telling us that this was a learning experience. That Absolutely. just still kills me. That kills Absolutely. me, bro. This, the team has a talent. It's more so like who's going to step up and be the leader, uh, like the vocal leader, the leader in the team. To, I mean, I, it's obviously – like I, I don't know if – this is not saying it's not Shire, but like there has to be a player leader on the team that's going to get these guys on the court – Playing, but they should, and like I just don't know who that's going to be. I I don't think Roach is that guy. Like I've talked about it before, and like he's a great player and he's done great things for this program. I just don't think that's his personality. Like this isn't Quinn Cook coming in being a dog like that. And um, I, I don't. Ryan, I, Ryan. it's yeah, you got, you're going to get in trouble, Ryan. It's the coach. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like I'm not. I'm not saying that he controls if a guy throws the ball out of bounds or anything. I'm not saying that. But, like, when when it comes to motivating the team to come out and play hard, that is That's the coach's responsibility. That is. Right? Am I crazy? If somebody, If people think I'm crazy, you can put it in the comments. If you think I'm crazy for saying that the coach is the one who ultimately motivates the team in the first few minutes of play when you come into a, a rivalry game like this, right? If, if I'm wrong, put it in the comments, right? Because may, maybe I am. Maybe I am. I'm open to maybe that I'm wrong. But, like, in my opinion, the thing that made Kay better than everybody else was his ability as a motivator, right? It was his ability as a motivator. He was an unparalleled motivator. Nobody's going to – John's not going to motivate like him. Nobody motivates like him, right? But you do have to – have your players come out with that level of motivation and you can't just be like, well, we've got to rely on like our, our player. Our player is the one who motivates us. The guy who gives the lecture before the game in the locker room, he's the guy who motivates us. Right. I, I'm saying on, like I said, I said on the floor leader, like who's your floor general. Who's going to be the one when the, when you're not going back to the bench, when the ball at a dead ball, like who's, who's the one that's going to be the vocal leader on the floor during the oh. Somebody. I, and still, I, I think that's just the reason. Though. I still feel like that is Roach, and I still feel like Roach is very vocal on the floor. I've seen moments, I've seen moments, I, and, I, and I wanted to go actually and clip this play yesterday, um, but I couldn't. I, I didn't have enough time to scroll through the games. There was a moment where Sean Stewart came on the floor in one of the games this season, 
and he he made one of his you know uh, freshman mistakes, and he was all in his head. And you just see Jeremy in the background, just clapping in his face, saying it's all good, it's all good. There are mo- Jeremy Roach is talking. I know he's talking. Yeah. He's been in too many games for for you know him to, to for him not to be vocal. You know, it's number one how you respond, how the players are responding to it for one, and it's it goes back to John Shire leading the way. You know, I I think it's I'm I'm more inclined to look at the coach before I look at a, a player instead of in terms of leadership. Yeah, I mean, like like to Russ's point, coming into this game, that's on the coach and the coaching staff for. And and like he's, I think he brought it up about the uh, senior night antics before the game and stuff. And like, is like, are we doing something at Duke differently than other schools? Because like, I get it. Like, senior nights can be emotional and stuff, but there's it, they just seem like I don't know. I, I I for some reason go back to the Coach K's last game at Cameron night, where it just seems like everything around the game was too big, and the moment was too big, and the players came out just flat. And that team was way more talented, different situation, but just like I these pregame ceremonies and everything into it. Like, it just seems like mentally it's, it's too big of a night with stuff surrounding the game and not about the game itself. Um, which is that this is kind of what it leads to. I'm not saying don't do senior night ceremonies and stuff like that. They all deserve it. But like, is, is that a factor? Like too much going out? John alluded to it, right? Like, is that they couldn't focus up after that? Like, and then we talked about the amount of pro, former players that were on, uh, site tonight, which is different than the Coach K night, obviously, but like twenty to thirty guys there tonight from uh, the Brotherhood, like just seems like a lot of stuff gets to these guys, and it I, I don't know how you combat that without uh, I don't know Shire doing something different before the game. I do think that Senior Night can be a hard night to make that adjustment for. I mean, we've seen some teams even today dealing with some issues like that, right? Like uh, Alabama barely beats Arkansas, obviously a team that Duke lost to, but like a bad Arkansas team at home on senior night, right? Like uh, obviously, but like, but then, but then I look at something like Tennessee where Tennessee lost to Kentucky tonight on senior night. But, but when you watch the game and you see how they play, like they were playing with fire, like they, they were playing tough and like Kentucky was just better. Like Kentucky just made tough shots. Right. Like Kentucky just made some threes and they were just better. And so more than anything else, that's the issue. Like Houston had senior night tonight and they put a 30 burger on Kansas. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what like Duke should be aspiring to, right? Duke should be aspiring to be the team that puts a 30 burger on a Kansas, not a team that's like, well, it was a really hard emotional, like, you know, night. And so it was tough, you know, for us to get past that. Like, I don't know, yeah. man. Like, that's I, I, that's that's another thing I hate about his his post game speech. I don't mean to rag on Shire, uh, but you know he said he said <laughs> he, said, he gets paid the big bucks so people like you can rag on him. We make no money, <laughs> and he makes a lot of money, so it's okay for you to rag on him a little bit. It's okay. Yeah, but 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 it's just like the senior day thing. He alluded, oh, he thinks it got to the team, bro. That's crazy to me. That, that 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 is crazy to me. Um, it's crazy, especially and, when you have when old, with, with it was three seniors total, two of which played decent minutes, and only one of which is a starter. Like it wasn't like they're hauling out Flip, Mark, Tyrese, and Roach all like celebrating them. It was one guy legitimately has been with, the, uh, and obviously Spencer, but like as scholarship guys the whole career, one guy, and that was too big of a moment for you to step up in and be like, man, I'm exhausted now. I can't give it my all during this game. Like. Come on, man. Yeah, but but yeah, but it's uh, even it's like it's someone someone commented to, commented uh, it earlier. Um, it's 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 like yo, it's as from a full team perspective. Yeah, how can you not be motivated and amped up and want to win this game, play this game like it's your last after they embarrassed you in Chapel Hill? This is on everybody, <laughs> not yeah. just Shire. Like from yep. from p- the top player to Spencer Hubbard on the bench. Like, how can you not Spencer, want to? Spencer's play? catching strays from this L. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm so, I'm just saying, as a, a team from the first player to the end of the bench, how do you not play with energy? How do you? How are you letting what the festivities, 
overcome and uh, over uh, overcome your uh, your will and energy to play this game. Like you just got smacked by Carolina. <laughs> yeah, this was your last chance to say maybe you do get an ACC tournament chance, but this was your chance to get the get back at home, the game you're supposed to win in front of the fans. And you you didn't have any energy tonight. Yeah, it's your best chance. The only player in the first four minutes I thought played with any sort of fire was Tyrese Proctor. You know, he was out there. He was trying. He, he like, dove for a loose ball. He made he made a basket or two, right? Uh, during that run when, like, we were down 15, like, right away, there was only one player who looked like he was out there to fight and was kind of, like, yelling. And, like, I think he, he made a basket and was fouled at one point. Maybe that was a little bit later, but, uh, you know, he he seemed interested from minute one and it didn't seem like the others were again i know that inside they were but it doesn't matter how they felt inside what matters is what manifests itself on the court you know and people are yeah people are roasting us in the comments for saying but to be clear we're not making senior night an excuse we're saying it should not be an excuse that's the that's the whole thing we're saying it should not be an excuse yeah, that's the whole yeah. point of what we're saying. In case that's not clear, I'm trying to find a Jeremy Roach clip. Uh, Why didn't Jalen Blake play tonight, man? You know, <laughs> you th the, the, people keep joking, but you know who I know would have cared tonight is Jalen Blake's. I know he Jaylen does care tonight. He plays for energy every time. Um, he plays with energy every time. He would have he would have fired up a three that would have gone into the upper rafters <laughs> or whatever, right? He would have had some like fun stuff going on. But you know what he would have done? He would have he would have gotten some sweet plays down, and he would have played with passion and fire and energy and the sort of thing that we look for. That is why I always love Jalen Blake's, even if he makes a bad play here or there, is because I never question that that dude is not playing like it's the last game he's ever going to play in his entire life. You know, I can't believe we've we've done like half a pod or we've done half the show of Russ, and it's been about energy and passion and playing hard and not. I didn't bring up Jalen Blake. And analytics. This this is when you know Duke did not play with fire. Is when Russ is going in on it as well. I wanted some sweet sweet Doctor Chaos tonight. It didn't happen. Oh yeah, let's get this. Oh. Turn it up. No, there's no video. I don't I don't see oh. the video yet, but I see the tweet. This is exactly what I said. I did not even see this tweet, but this is exactly what I said he was going to do. Um, yeah, Jeremy Rose, I put that on me. It's my senior night. I didn't play well. Yeah, I, I don't like in that. I feel bad for the guy, man. He's got to live with this for ever. Like, I, I it sucks, man. Yes, yeah. I hey, I it's it's an emotional time for players when they lose and and when they win, right? The guys who win are incredibly stoked, you know. I'm sure that the guys on UNC, who played their last ever game at Cameron, were very, very happy with how it went. And the guys who played their last game at Cameron on our team were very, very unhappy with how, the, how it went. It's an emotional yeah, time. Here we go, Marcus. Here we go, Marcus. Uh, we've pointed out positives in the midst of us talking the whole night. But this is your reaction to us believing that we're just negative. <laughs> yes, we lost to a great team. UNC is a better team. We, we alluded to Flip was dominant in the second half. That was a positive. We alluded to Jeremy Cain played well, well tonight. Proctor, Proctor on the whole played a good game tonight. Proctor played well, especially defensively on um yes on, on R.J. Davis. He played – we alluded that the whole show. We addressed all this, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> what You were late. You were late, dude. We Had talked been, about all this. Had to have been Come on, late. Marcus. You must you're off doing, you're off doing your Arthur the King uh, you know, press. <laughs> he's making he was going to wall burgers yeah. yeah. what are you talking about how positive the team played okay <laughs> all right okay, boy, we do got video die. do we have any you guys can keep going if you want but and do you want to wrap this up or you guys want to keep going no nah, i want to play the jeremy rose video for a second um oh, hold did you on find it? like yeah it's tweeted from my ops accounts but you know i have to have to no. download it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what positives to take from tonight, other than the fact that you know, uh, for stretches, we played well against a team that is going to be a two seed, 
Uh, but like, if you want to, if you want to walk away with that, then that's great for a rivalry game. I don't think that's an acceptable takeaway, but if you want to say, Hey, for long stretches of this game, we more or less played evenly with a two seed. I think that's completely a reasonable thing for you to think and say, but I, I, I don't think two fans should accept that. I'm about to play the clip. Hold on. Give me two seconds. I hate you videos man i feel so bad for these guys i don't, yeah, did, I don't know y'all why. just see me oh wow that's crazy y'all just saw me go go to that clip bro. okay let's just talk let's just talk i put that shit on me um it's my scene night um i don't know i just i just didn't play well um yeah, I just, put, I just put this on me. I mean, they played a hell of a game, too. Came out hot. Cormac was hot. Um, but at the end of the day, I put it. It's on me, for real. Are you, uh, where you go from here? How do you, how do you kind of pick it up and keep it moving? Could you see? Come back Monday, um, watch the film, and just see what we got to do better. We still have the postseason. Um, ACC next week. And uh, just got to learn from it. Yeah, yeah, it's tough to watch. I mean, that's it's, tough, man. It's tough to watch. Um, he he <laughs> he just, he just played really badly. Like it, he's a great kid. He's a great representative of the university. He's delivered for us consistently all season, and he had a really bad performance in a bad place, and and that sucks. And he's going to have to deal with that. And. You know, again, I, I I hope he comes. I hope this gives him some fire to go into the ACC tournament. Um, again, I'm sure the people who are not Duke fans loved watching that because they're masochists. I also don't love watching, for what it's worth, when UNC like loses at the end of the year. I don't watch like you know if like if Baycott like if they lose in the Sweet 16 and he's going to be crying in some clip. I'm not going to be go, like tweeting it going ha ha ha. Look at this guy. That's you're, just, you're a grown. You're a grown man. <laughs> I'm an adult it. who thinks that when uh, people devote a lot of time to something and get sad about it, that it sucks. But that's just me. Maybe I'm. Uh... <laughs> no, nah, I don't think. I don't think anybody. Well, well, anybody just runs. Well, I'm not gonna say because Duke Twitter be wild and after. after <laughs> wild. Yeah, there this. are two people who will if they <laughs> miss something like that. They will be tweeting it out and they'll be posting some LOLs. But, but like, buckets by be- Bagley will we'll make it his profile picture if he if he catches big cut. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, it was man. just a bad. It was just a bad game from a guy who's a, a great dude and has been a really good player all year. Um. And he'll he'll just have to wear that, and he'll have to deal with it, and I, I was, use it as motivation yeah. going forward. I will say I think he definitely use it as motivation. I mean, I think we could trust him in March, Jeremy Roach. Um, I think he'll show up when it matters, and you know, it, this is do or die for the next stretch of the season. Now it's you know his career's career is on the line, so I know he definitely at least wants to. Go out with a bang. I know he's gonna give it full effort. I, I, I'm 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 very confident Roach will back um, bounce back from this. I'm not. I have no worries. I do think, and and I know that you were tweeting with Brian about it earlier, Zion. I think that Roach and Proctor and and even McCain to some extent, when we don't have like when the offense isn't cooking, there is a tendency of of the guards to just drive into drive into big bodies and and to try to like go like well let's see if we can make it work and like proctor proctor kicks it out more than roach and mccain do roach did have at least one nice kick out tonight i don't remember uh, how many assists he had but he had he had at least one or two nice kickouts on those drives but others he he just went into the trees and 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 turned it over or made a bad or took a bad shot proctor did the same mccain did the same it's part of the issue with the offense that we have you know like when we're sharing the ball you don't need to give the ball to a guard and say, well, go drive it into guys who are bigger than you um, because then there are better shots available. Um, but, you know, that's, I think that's why the two point percentage, I, I'm not even, I don't even see the two point percentage, but I'd have to guess the two point percentage for Roach Proctor McCain combined is probably bad tonight. It's probably really bad. Um, and, and I think a lot of it has to do with those, those very possessions. I mean, we just saw it time and again tonight, time and again. Yeah. You know, um, 
I think I, I'm being kicked out, so <laughs> I gotta go back to my apartment. You're being, oh, you're being kicked out of of where you're where you are right now, your brother's place. Yeah, because uh, they gotta take the chairs. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We appreciate y'all for tuning in. Uh, if you reached it, this, hit the thumbs uh, up like, on YouTube. Yeah, subscribe, um, like on YouTube, comment. We had almost nearly five thousand in the spot tonight, so appreciate <laughs> those who tuned in for our tears. But we will be back. Um, shout out to Autograph, our sponsor. Obviously, go download the app. You can get sixteen dollars tickets to the ACC tournament. Um, go go to our Twitters and find the link. We'll post them often. Um, shout out to Homefield Apparel. Crazy. Use the code crazy. 15% off. Uh, but yeah, tough night. Yeah, there's a there it is right there. Tough night. Oh, yeah. Let's but, get you know, it. Look at this. This is nice, too. This it's is good nice. material. It's, it's soft. I like this. It's I nice. like this. I gave my uh, I gave my little nephew. I'm here with my in-laws. I gave my little nephew a home field hat for his birthday. Okay. He was stoked. Okay. Man. He was stoked. Okay. Well, yeah, we appreciate y'all for tuning in. I got to head out. Um, Go Duke. We'll be back.